we have a bit of a far side blast, a small radiation storm, and multiple solar storms are headed on their way to Earth, which is going to give us a bumpy ride. Those stories and more are in this week's Spotlight. Space weather this week is picking up in a big way. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we are saying goodbye to this coronal hole. This gave us some fast solar wind over this past week and gave us some beautiful aurora clear down to mid-latitudes along with some other solar storms. And meanwhile, though, although things are calming down, we still are getting a bit of a bumpy ride. The first bit of it is this poof right here. Look at that. Woof. That actually was an, a partially Earth-directed solar storm. It's going to go to the east of Earth mainly, but it's likely going to graze us here over the next couple of days. And that starts our bumpy ride. But there are other filament eruptions that we're going to be talking about, mainly sympathetic eruptions that have been occurring because we've been having some massive far side blasts. Of course, old region 4246 and 4248. These regions that gave us a lot of the activity on the front side of the disk just this past week, they have picked it up a notch and are really getting exciting. That may not look too much, but whoosh, look at that. So these uh, regions continue to fire off big solar storms and it's causing some sympathetic eruptions. We're getting a few uh, filaments that are launching in several places We've, over the past couple days. They may give us a little bit of solar storming. It's not really clear how big of a solar storm they're going to cause. You can see some of these poofs as they, as they lift off. And it's part of that may also be because this is kind of a partial closing coronal hole that used to be right here. It's still got a few open field lines in this area, and so it continues to be a little bit more unstable and it makes solar storm launches a little bit more likely. So we might see a few more filaments launch in this arena in here. But meanwhile, as we get back to the red disk, you can see some major strong filaments all in here getting very, very twisted up. This is a very unstable configuration. And sure enough, late on the 21st into the 22nd, we get a massive far side blast. You can watch it coincident with a filament launch right in here. Whoosh, right there. We also get a lighting up of this region in here and a small launch from a filament, but you would not be able to tell because on the far side of the sun, there's re region 4246 launches this massive far side halo, also starts a, a radiation storm that is still hitting Earth right now and is likely going to keep us at the enhanced level for the next couple days before things finally calm down. And believe it or not, in here somewhere, which we can't really see, is a Earth-directed solar storm. And I'll show you that as we move into looking at stereo data. We can tell that we actually do have an Earth-directed storm, but again, it's likely not going to be all that strong. So we're hoping that it's just going to give us a bit of a bumpy ride. Now let's switch to our stereo imagery. As you can see, here we got stereo uh, looking at the sun from the far side, uh, just to the west limb of Earth. And you can see regions 42, 46, or 46 and region 42, 48 really getting busy in there. You see, that's when it launched that big one. You'll watch it right here launch, launch a really big solar storm. Let's wait for it. Wait for it. Come on, boom, right there. You can see the big post-eruptive arcades right here. This thing launched way off to the far side, so it's not Earth-directed, but it also launched that big radiation storm. In the same time, if we come back over here, these are the regions that are pointing mainly at Earth. And you can see, let me back it up just a smidge, you can actually, do you see how you get this little evacuation here? See how bright it is? Watch how it releases, whoosh, just like that. Do you see that? You can even see this part of the field line kind of bend down a little bit. So this is definitely a let, letting go from something that's going to be Earth directed, but we just can't see it on coronagraphs. You can even see the closed loops forming afterwards because this big monster just took everything. So this is camouflaged inside those coronagraphs, and sadly we don't have good stereo imagery yet to be able to see whether or not this is Earth-directed, but I'm betting it is, and that means we could get a bumpy ride easily from the 24th all the way through the 26th before things calm down. Now switching to our moon, we are passing through the new moon phase on our way through the first quarter, and by the Halloween date, we will have about a 68% illuminated moon. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe the peak of the Orionids, well, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are expecting this kind of bumpy ride from those mini little solar storms that are headed towards Earth. The first should be a 
hitting us or right around the 24th be just a bit of a graze. I'm expecting maybe active conditions at high latitudes with up to about a 20% chance of a minor storm. And this could carry into the 25th and possibly into the 26th where we might get hit by a slightly larger storm. We'll have to see how that unfolds. So I'm gonna just hold off to say that it's gonna be bigger or not, but just be aware that we could get a bit more of a bump up because of that. And then Aurora photographers, if you're at mid latitudes, well, I'm only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have about a 25% chance of active conditions, possibly about a 10% chance of minor storm conditions. And that's gonna be again over the 24th, 25th, and possibly 26th before things calm down. And now switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting in the mid 130s to 140s, and I'm expecting that solar flux to climb here over this week because we've got some big regions rotating into Earth view. NOAA's got us at minor noise on the dayside radio bands, sitting at about a 15% chance of uh, radio blackouts at the R1 to R2 level. Uh, that's likely going to climb to probably about 25% as we move into the early part of next week and possibly even higher. Uh, we don't really have much of a chance of X-class flares right now at the moment, but that again could change as we move through uh, the, pat the, the latter part of the weekend into next week because of those new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view. So overall, it is a bit of a reprieve from the loud noise that we got on the dayside radio bands last week from those regions that have now headed far side, but we're watching them because they will be rotating back into Earth view in about 10 days. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, we are sitting at the D2 minor range. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. It doesn't mean that we're completely quiet. We are sitting at elevated conditions right now, not expecting that we're going to get back up to an S1 level, but this is because of that big far side blast. So if region 4246 plans to let off another one, well, we could continue to see elevated, possibly S1 level conditions, but it's a low risk. Likely by about the, the 25th, we're going to be back to almost normal. And then through the weekend, things should be quieted back down. So uh, if you're a frequent flyer, and this does include air crew and you high risk passengers, Please pay attention. We do have slightly elevated conditions and please include this in your flight plans. So the space weather this week has gotten pretty exciting. We don't have a lot headed toward Earth. In fact, we just have a couple wispy solar storms that will give us a bit of a bumpy ride starting about the 24th and possibly in through the 26th and maybe even the 27th before things calm down. It's a little early to tell. But Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely get a bit of a show. Aurora photographers at mid latitudes, well, likely the solar wind speed is going to be too slow to bring some decent storming down to mid latitudes. So only if you're dedicated and you can chase substorms should you bother to try. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, things are looking pretty good for you right now. We're getting a bit of a reprieve. All that noise on the dayside bands you've probably noticed has dropped a bit, and that's going to continue easily through, I'm hoping, about the weekend before you start noticing the noise rise again. So enjoy. And now you GPS users, well, things aren't too bad. Day side, we don't have a big risk for radio blackouts. And on the night side, we're only expecting mild storms. So things should be pretty good for you all the way around the world, along, as long as you stay vigilant near dawn and near dusk. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.